Hello, how are you doing? I am Mohamed Sadri, PhD student, University of Bologna, Italy, and soon a postdoctoral researcher at TU Kaiserslautern, Germany. In this video, and also a series of other videos after this one, I will only talk about designing with Axi. So the main focus will be creating axi based architectures using different techniques and tools. In this video, I am going to talk about designing with axi using Xilinx Vivado environment. And actually, since I intend to show you and to teach you also a little bit about Xilinx Vivado environment, in addition to how you design axi based system using this environment. This video will be a little bit longer than the other videos and also there will be, there will be more videos talking only and only about this topic. So a little bit about Xilinx Vivado environment. It's a newly created environment by Xilinx and it really helps you to create complicated uh, architectures, embedded architectures. But the big shortcoming in my view of Xilinx Vivado environment is that it only supports the seven series devices of Xilinx. So if in your project or in your educational class or whatever, you are, you are using the Xilinx Zinc device or any of Artix, Kintex or Virtex 7 devices, then Xilinx Vivado environment can be used for creating projects and developing designs. However, if you are using one Spartan 6 or Virtex 6 or Virtex 5 or older devices of Xilinx, then the Vivado environment cannot, cannot be used. And you should continue using the old or traditional Xilinx flow, which is based on Xilinx Embedded Development Kit or Xilinx XPS environment. As a result, now that I'm going to talk about Axi-based architectures, I will first show you how to create a sample Axi-based architecture using the Vivado environment and in another video, I will show you how to do the same thing using the XPS environment. So the first question might be, after you prepared your 7 series hardware, either the Zinc device or either other devices, Artix, Kintex or Vitex devices, then the question will be from where you get the Vivado environment. First, there is a download link from Xilinx. And here is the page I want to show you. So here you directly download the Xilinx Vivado environment. All you need is just a simple registration in Xilinx website. And then you have the tool. And then for running the tool, you will need a kind of license. There is a free evaluation license, which is active for only 30 days. And if you install this license, you can use all of the features provided by the tool, which is practically, in my idea, not needed. And then if you are using the Vivado environment for education, I can say the tool is basically free. There is a very good support for universities from the Xilinx side. For example, there is this Euro practice through which if you are in a university in Europe and even recently outside Europe, your professor through Euro practice can purchase a complete license of Xilinx Vivado environment. And not only the license, but also your professor is able to purchase low cost hardware. So if you want to have a low cost zinc board, 
through Euro practice you can also purchase the main hardware so here is the website for Euro practice actually this is the web page which is showing the prices for the licenses and here you can see Vivado Design Suite System Edition 25 licenses costs just 820 euros which is actually nothing so if you are in a university you can encourage your professor to contact Euro practice and to create an account there and then through his account with suitable payment you can access to the complete licenses of Vivado environment by the way if due to any reason this is not possible then there is the webpack edition of Vivado environment which for educational purposes it is really enough so here is the web page for Vivado design suite webpack edition and in this table if you look you can see that all of the basic features that you really need for learning the tool and using the tool is already included in the webpack edition of Xilinx and for example high level synthesis or system generator or serial IO analyzer or log logic analyzer these, these are the things that you don't really need for initial stage of education and as I will show you if you have access to, to the integrated design environment it's really enough to do a lot of different tasks so you can have the webpack edition of Xilinx and you can learn whatever needed to use the Vivado environment and finally, I have seen that whenever you buy a board from Xilinx, for example, you buy a ZC706 board, you, along with the board, it comes a license that is locked to the device that is included on the board, and you can also use that license for running the tool. So, through either either of these provided solutions you can uh, run Vivado and you can have access to Vivado and I believe that for there is no limitation for anybody to use the tool for educational purposes now in this video I'm going to use the Vivado environment to create an example system for you our example system contains for now only memory mapped XI devices and only memory mapped XI interfaces. For XI master, we will mainly use the Microblades CPU as our XI master. As I will show you, Microblades will provide us with a set of XI master interfaces. And then an important note is that this series of videos are about the Xilinx Zinc device and as I will show you in future the Xilinx Zinc device provides a very nice programmable system containing one dual core ARM A9 uh, CPU subsystem which is really mm, amazing and we don't need uh, probably we don't need the microblades to be included there and whenever we are using the Xilinx Zinc device this programmable system block is the one that we will really use but for now for my example I, I now forget about the Zinc device temporarily and I will suppose that we don't have this ARM A9 CPU cores and we have just microblades and I go ahead through the design then we will have a set of XI slaves we will have one XI interrupt controller one XI timer one XI UART unit we will have a nice XI DRAM controller and then finally an XI block memory RAM controller before I continue I want to have a quick review of 
what we have already said through the previous videos. We divided the Axi interfaces into two categories. The first, memory mapped, and the second, Axi stream interfaces. And we talked briefly about each of these Axi interfaces. And now I want to tell you that the memory mapped Axi interfaces are also divided into two categories. One, full Axi interfaces and the second axi light interfaces. The difference between full axi interfaces and axi light interfaces is that when you have a full axi interface, usually your axi interface is capable of handling burst transactions. While when you have an axi light interface, Usually your Axi interface just handles single bit transactions. What's the difference between burst transactions and single bit transactions? Burst transactions, you pass one address and following the past address, you transfer several chunks of data. While in a single bit transaction, after each past address, after each past read or write address, you just transfer one chunk of data. So here is a very simple photo showing the difference between an Axi single bit transaction, which is usually produced by Axi light interfaces. So you have the address and following the address, you have one data phase. So you have one address phase and following by that you have just one single, I would say, bit of data, for example, 32 bits of data or 16 bits of data, only one time and during one clock cycle, you are transferring one chunk of data. So address, one data transfer. Then again, if you want to do another data transfer, again, you issue an address phase, you initiate an address phase, and then following that, you transfer just one chunk of data, one word of data, one bit of data. However, when you have an interface capable of handling Axi transactions, then following one address phase, you can transfer several chunks of data. And for this chunk of data, which is the first one, the address in which the data will be written or the address from which the data will be read is actually this address specified here. For the next chunk of data, it will be this address plus number of bytes transferred in each chunk of data. For example, if I'm transferring four bytes each time, then the address that this guy will be written to will be this address plus four. Then for the next one, this address plus eight. For the next one, this address plus 12. And then we have another address phase and consequently another data phase following that address phase. So as you can see, for burst capable AXA interfaces, we will have a higher level of bandwidth and higher performance but this comes with higher area consumption so if in your design you have a block that is doing for example kind of control operation it's not data handling operation and it it just transfers time to time small pieces of data then you don't really need an axi burst capable interface one Axi light interface is completely enough for you. So if you have devices which need to transfer a small amount of data, then you don't need Axi burst capable interfaces. Axi light is completely enough. And Axi light interface, as I will show you in later videos, is much simpler than one full Axi interface. Okay, now, for the first time, I want to show you 
in fact the graphical environment of Xilinx Vivado here is the first page which is loaded actually when you run Vivado and in this page obviously you have create new project which is quite useful whenever you want to create a new project you can use this link you have open project open example project one other very useful uh, entry that I have found in Xilinx Vivado is this manage IP sometimes in a project you, you sometimes in a project you just want to create a specific IT IP sorry and, and use it in another project okay so you have created already your Xilinx Vivado project it is running and in the middle of the work you need to create another IP with some specific customizations and add this IP to to the old project so this is this is really useful manage IP because it allows you to create only and only IP blocks and then to include and use those IP blocks in other projects then you have documentation and tutorial user guide and here this quick take videos is is very very interesting I really suggest you to have a look at this set of videos provided by Xilinx and if you look at them you will see that they, are, they contain a really nice set of tutorials um, which show you how to use the tool and how, how to use different features of the tool is is really nice make sure that you you have a look at this entry and then finally in this page there is there's ver another very important in fact uh, entry which is the TCL console you have a TCL console here and as I will show you in Xilinx Vivado environment you can do all of your tasks using this graphical interface or you can do them through the TCL console and as I will show you this TCL console is really really useful and in some phases of the project you only and only use the TCL console but for now I say create new project and we have a set of dialog boxes in which you can decide the configuration of your project the project name the project folder and the type of the project I, I just say next you you don't need to really deal with details in these dialog boxes you can do all of these later when your project is actually opened for this video I want to intentionally use the Artix 7 which is the lowest cost as Xilinx says lowest cost uh, Artix device mm, in 7 series so I use the Artix 7 board for now temporarily only for this video and finish now the new project is created uh, by Xilinx Vivada environment and if you look here at TCL console you can see that the operations that you have done through the graphical environment these operations have all equivalent TCL commands and through the material that I have provided with this course on my own website googlia.com or greenelectrons.com you can see that I have put also one TCL script that contains all of the commands that I show you during this video so if you want to do all of the operations that I will show you during this video you can just download that TCL script file and inside the Vivado environment here in the TCL console you can say source the name of the TCL script that you have downloaded from my website and as you do this you, you will see that the entire thing that I will show you through these two hours of videos for example will be done completely automatically by the Vivado environment okay so we have the project and you can use the traditional flow so the traditional flow is usually you you add HDL source code here to your project 
and but what I want to do and I really like to do always is to begin with a block design I want to create my architecture as a block design I don't want to in the first step to write HDL code and we don't really need to write VHD HDL very log or VHDL or system very log code. What I say is just create for me a block design in which I can put the main components of my system. Okay, so here is the block design interface, and to this block design interface, I want to you add the set of IP components that I need for my educational video okay one good suggestion is that if you are using a vivado environment prepare a screen i would say a monitor as large and with, with the highest resolution possible because the higher is the resolution the better you can use the tool so i just click on the add ip and i want to add one microblaze block so i type microblaze microblaze and we have the microblaze added to our project. Now I want to configure this microblaze block uh, to, to customize it and enable my required interfaces. Before that, I jump back to my presentation and I show you the microblaze as I want it to be. Okay, so here is the microblaze, it's a CPU core. Okay, microblaze needs really a separate course for itself. So if you didn't understand everything that I described in this video, don't worry. The target in this video is to work with Axi and to learn how you can connect different Axi components inside Vivado environment. So I don't expect you to, in fact, get everything that I say about microblaze. But this microblaze component that I have here has obviously a reset input, clock input, and it's the CPU, right? So it has an interrupt input, and then it has one data and instruction local memory bus, I think, interface, through which the microblaze fetches its initial set of instructions. So at boot time, when the microblaze gets booted and wants to fetch and execute the first set of instructions it usually looks at this interface and when it needs the data it looks at it at this interface so these two interfaces are usually used for booting the microblaze core and if the application that you have developed to be executed on the microblaze cpu is very small then also these interfaces will be used through the rest of the operation of the microblaze block and you may not have you may not need these other interfaces that we have here okay so but right now i have the data local memory bus instruction local memory bus and as i will show you they will get connected in fact to block memories uh, on the fpga and then on this side, I have a set of Axi master interfaces. The first two Axi master interfaces that we, I have here are connected to the data bus of the microblaze. And this one, the green Axi master interface that I have here is connected to the instruction bus of the microblaze. So as you have here, Microblaze is created using the Harvard architecture and it has one, principally it has one instruction bus and it has one data bus. And then on each of these instruction and data buses, there exist D multiplexers, which look at the address of the incoming transaction. And based on the address of the incoming transaction, it puts, the demultiplexer puts the transaction on suitable, in fact, interface port. So, for example, if 
microblade wants to fetch an instruction the multiple the demultiplexer looks at the address from which the microblade wants to fetch the instruction and based on the address it will route the transaction either to instruction lmb or to mxi instruction cache for a data which is going to be read or written by the microblades again the demultiplexer looks at the address to which this data is going to be written and then routes that transaction either to data local memory bus interface or to mxi data port or to mxi data cache interface okay and okay this is just very brief introduction if you didn't get it don't worry it's not important just i wanted to highlight uh, some very basic concepts okay so what is important right now is that we have here a set of axi master interfaces through this axi master interface m axi instruction cache only the instructions will be fetched by the microblades to be executed through these two interfaces only data will be fetched if the data that is going to be fetched or to be written is toward a peripheral is for example the data that, that is going to be written to the UART interface the data will appear here on the data port and if the data is going to be fetched from for example the DRAM or is going to be written to the DRAM the, the data will be appear here on the MXI data cache okay I will describe these concepts again I will repeat them again in more detail later so I come back to the Xilinx Vivalo environment and I just run block automation and I want to do a block automation for my microblaze component for my microblaze component I want the local memory to be 8 kilobytes. I don't change this configuration. This memory is actually the memory which will get connected to the LMB interface. So the memory that will reside on the local memory bus interface is this one. Then I don't want any kind of ECC error, error correction code at the moment. I don't need it and i want my microblaze component to have in fact caches okay so i want my microblaze component to have eight kilobytes of instruction cache and eight kilobytes of data cache and i want to be able to debug my microblaze unit and i want my microblaze caches to be able to talk to the outside world through the axi interfaces and i want also to include an interrupt controller in my system and then i want also the logic related to handling the clock signal i do this very basic setup and i just press ok and then the xilinx vivado environment will create for me all of the other required pieces of hardware to be able to run microblades in the specified configuration by me okay so here is the design at this stage i will first focus on the microblades itself the microblades is changed from what we saw in the first step in the first step we we saw the microblaze which had the dlmb and ilmb but the first microblaze didn't contain mxi dp mxi dc and mxi ic actually these three guys are now appeared because of the configuration that i applied to the microblaze block I, I asked the microblaze block to 
contain caches. So you see these two interfaces. And I asked Microblaze block to have also XI interfaces, XI ports. So you, you see also this interface. Because if you look at the Microblaze documentation, you will see that it is an extremely configurable component and it is able to talk different kind of standards and XI interfaces are just one of the standards that microblades can talk using them so i can also for example configure microblades block to talk plb core connect that i had a very brief talk about it in the i think in the first or second videos okay so i have my microblades with this set of XI interfaces and as I told you, these two XI interfaces are dedicated or I would say connected to the caches of the microblaze. So if we go inside the microblaze block diagram, we see that these two XI master interfaces are connected to the caches of the microblaze. And this guy is a low performance XI interface which is dedicated only and only for talking to low performance peripherals so if you have uart if you have timer if you have any kind of low performance peripheral which doesn't produce a high amount of data doesn't need a high performance or high bandwidth then it's connected to this xi interface okay so first i follow these two links i want to know how in fact the local memory bus is connected to block memories it is it is simple it is nothing special i just before doing that i regenerate the layout so that the vivado environment puts all of the components in a more condensed uh, fashion so that i can i can look at them easily it it makes your block diagram clean and easy to navigate and easy to read so here now we have the microblaze and the microblaze is connected to a block which is called microblaze local memory and actually if i go inside this block i see that there are some in fact block memories instantiated inside this component and then there are some interfaces which are connected to these buses okay so basically you can you look at this block as a kind of block memory okay which which is used for storing the initial code that is going to be executed by your microblaze and also initial pieces of data that is going to be used by your code okay so i don't want to talk anymore about this component is not the target of our talk now if I look at MXI data port, I see that it is obviously connected to an XI interconnect. So if I follow this signal, what I see is that this signal is going to an XI interconnect. And this XI interconnect, right now it has just one slave port and one master port. As you remember, when i was doing the block automation for the microblaze block i asked the two to also include the interrupt controller and the interrupt controller is an xi component we have it here this is one microblaze xi interrupt controller xi interrupt controller and that that one is the instance name okay so what is this XI interrupt controller is doing it receives all of the interrupt signals from different components in your system it gathers all of uh, these interrupt signals and then it sends one unique interrupt signal to the microblaze okay so whenever any interrupt appeared here on the input of this port the interrupt signal which is going to microblaze will be enabled and then the microblaze will read the registers internal to this XI interrupt controller to see who is the guy who 
who has risen and interrupt okay and then it goes to to that component and performs the required actions so the interrupt controller of the microblades is an external component and it is based on axi so it has one axi slave port and then it has the interrupt output port and as you add other components to your system you will connect the interrupt outputs of those components to this block which concatenates all of these interrupt signals and send this one concatenated signal to the interrupt controller and then there exists some registers inside this guy a set of registers for each of these input signals and through these registers you can mask the interrupts you can enable disable the interrupts and you can clear the interrupts so it gives you a very nice piece of configurable hardware to manage your interrupts so here in my presentation i talked already about the microblade cpu i want to add two other components to this system i want to add one axi timer and one axi uart okay so the axi timer and axi uart are very simple blocks the axi timer is usually used by the microblades to measure time for example you need to measure time intervals or you need for example to have a kind of timer interrupt which interrupts the cpu um, with a very fixed frequency so you use the axi timer for these purposes and then you have the axi uart the axi uart obviously co contains one uart interface which will go to the pins of your fpga and then will connect to your uart plug on the board and then it, you connect it to your computer and this is the main interface through which you can debug your design and to see for example the output of printf messages that the microblade cpu core is running okay so this is actually a very important piece of hardware because this is the first tool that you use to debug your design and to see if your design is working or not both of these guys have axi slave interfaces okay so inside my vivado environment i want to add these two components i can either right click on the screen and say add ip or I can simply press Ctrl I and then I press I type axi uart axi uart light I add it and then again Ctrl I axi timer axi timer I add it and now I have two new components added to my system I want these components to be seen by the microblade cpu core indeed i want the microblade cpu core to be also able to talk to these two components so the axi slave interfaces of these two components should also get connected to this axi interconnect here because this is the axi interconnect which is connected to m axi dp port the port in microblaze that we use for talking to peripherals so i should connect these axi slave interfaces to this axi interconnect block but the vivado environment performs all of this operation for you completely automatically you just run connection automation and then you select the axi port that you like vivado to automatically connect to your preferred master so for example here axi uart light 0 x s axi i select it and then vivado environment asks me to where do you want to connect this axi slave port in fact it is asking me who is the master of this axi slave component and vivado provides you with a list of possible choices right now there is just one choice 
and that is the microblade zero peripheral interface i'll just press ok and here you are the vivago environment has increased the number of master ports on this axi interconnect to two and then it has connected the second master port to the slave port of UART light. So right now and since then, the microblaze is able to communicate to also the UART interface through its MXIDP port. Okay. And then also Vivado environment has connected the clock and reset signals. Now, along with this block diagram that we are developing, in parallel there exists another very important sheet or table that is updated as you are updating your block diagram and that is the addresses. So here you have the diagram and then on another sheet you have the address editor and in the address editor you have in fact the list of your components and the address range and address offset which is allocated to each of these components in fact i want to know how microblaze zero is seeing each of its components in the system for example if i extend these guys i can see that for example the microblaze zero which is our axi master is seeing the axi uart light zero at this address so this is the offset and for this address range so this is a component which is occupying a 64 kilobytes address range okay and then on the or or another example the microblaze on its axi interface it is seeing the interrupt controller at this address or the microblaze on its local memory bus instruction interface it is seeing the low ilmb component at this address and this is the address from which when the microblaze core powers up it begins fetching instructions so you see it is located in a very suitable address this block of memory and now in this in fact address editor i can see that there exists also one unconnected slave and that is the axoi timer okay so i come back here and again i click on run connection automation and this time i want to choose the axoi slave port of the timer i have the axoi timer here run connection automation i select the axi slave port of the timer and the, again the same thing happens the only possible master at the moment is microblade zero i just press ok and indeed vivado environment performs two sets of actions first it creates required connections inside the block diagram second it updates the address map so as you see now axi timer has also a specific address so since then whenever the microblaze cpu core accesses this address area from 41c0000 to 41c0fffff it is actually accessing the address range of the timer so it can have access to the registers of the timer to read the registers of the timer and to write to them okay now i come back here and i notice that each of these timer and uart light have in fact interrupt output ports which are the interrupt port that is used to send different notifications to the cpu what i do i connect these interrupt ports to the inputs 
ports of my concat concatenator block. So I zoom out a little bit. I have the XI interrupt controller here and I have this concat block here. It doesn't do anything special. It just concatenates the incoming signal. I connected the interrupt port of XI timer to the concat block and also I connect the interrupt port of my UART light to the concat block. Okay, so I have now two bits signal here and one bit, one bit signal here. Okay, now another important point is that this master XI UART light has one output interface which is called UART. Okay, let's have a look. Here we have this port UART and this UART contains one RX which is input and one TX which is output signal. Okay, and I want this to go outside of my design. In fact, this is one interface that should go outside the FPGA. So what I do, I just select this port, I right click and I say create interface port and you can here select a name for your interface port whatever and just you press ok so you have now in fact your UART interface which goes outside this block diagram meaning that this is an out output port this is an external port an external interface to your design ok now I rearrange all of the components again I make it clean this is our design up to this point now I come back to my presentation I talked about the XI interrupt controller the XI interrupt controller the XI timer the XI UART they are all XI slaves for M XI DP port and there is an address map that I showed you and based on this address map the microblaze can access any of these guys then each of XI timer, XI UART and the rest of components that you will instantiate inside your system will have an interrupt output the interrupts will enter XI interrupt controller and the XI interrupt controller will send a unique interrupt signal to the microblaze CPU core Whenever this interrupt signal gets activated, this means that someone in the system has created an interrupt, has created a kind of event, an interrupt event. And then it is the task of microblades, in fact it is the task of the programmer who has developed the code for the microblades to go first read the registers inside the XI interrupt controller and to see who has created the interrupt event and then after it understood that who is the one who, who is generating the interrupt it will go to the proper unit that has generated the interrupt and it will perform the required actions we will describe this in more detail later so don't worry if you didn't get it completely now I want to add one very important component to my system and that is the XI DRAM controller. If you are running pieces of code which are small or you are handling data arrays which are small then you don't really need an external memory. But as soon as you are doing something serious, you are doing some real data processing task or you want to run an operating system like Linux on your microblade CPU core then you definitely need DRAM components outside your chip to store data since the amount of memory block which is located inside the chip is really limited. So the XI DRAM controller is a very important piece of hardware which you usually need to include in your system. And as I am showing you here, this XI DRAM controller will get connected to in fact the cache interfaces of your microblaze component through one XI interconnect unit so we have the XI DRAM controller here 
Axe side drum controller is very simple. On one side, it is talking to Axa, it's talking to your DRAM components, which are located on the board. They are either separate components or it is a DIM module. And then on the other side, it has just one simple Axi slave component. But the point is, this Axi slave component interface that we have here is a kind of full Axi slave interface. It is capable of accepting burst transactions. And then these guys that we have here, MXI DC and MXI IC, which are connected to the data cache and instruction cache of microblades, they are again supporting burst transactions. Okay, so I go back to my Vivado design environment. Again, control I and I type MIG, memory interface generator, and I double click. So what I want right now to add to my system is a memory interface generator and I want this memory interface generator to talk to the DRAM components which are placed on the RTX 7 board okay so and we've had an environment knows this already so we in the beginning of the project we indicated that we are working on RTX 7 board and there's a kind of configuration file containing all of the configurations of RTX 7 um, as, a, as, as, as a complete sheet of data and Vivado is using that. So I instantiate this component and now I can probably zoom in on this component and actually it doesn't contain right now any interfaces but I can double click on this component to see what kind of configuration is provided by the Xilinx environment, Vivado environment. Actually when you double click on this component a very complicated I would say, or a very complete, is better to say, interf um, in configuration interface appears. This is Xilinx memory interface generator core, in which you can configure all of the parameters of your DRAM controller in detail. Right now, I don't want to change any of the parameters of DRAM controller. Indeed, what I want to say is for this block I run block automation again as similar as the block automation that I did for microblaze you can run block automation for this component and when you run block automation uh, it says that this board this specific board that we are creating our design on has a set of DDR3 SDRAM components and I will connect this unit to those components. So you just press OK. And Vivado performs all of the rest of the operations for you automatically. OK. So here is now um, our component it is updated it has now a connection to in fact ddr3 components which are located on the rtx rtx7 board as you see this is another out, out external interface of our design so if i zoom out and if i regenerate the layout and if i look at my MIG component, I see that it has one DDR3 port. The DDR3 port is now an external interface. In fact, it goes to the pins of the FPGA and from there it goes to the DRAM component. And actually you don't need to do anything else because Vivado 
contains a file which is indicating which pins of the FPGA are connected to the DRAM component. So you don't need to provide all of this information in detail to Vivado. They are already there. So you just say to the tool that I want to connect this block to the DDR3 memory and the tool is capable of distinguishing by itself to which pins on the FPGA this external port should go. Okay. But if you created your own board, then what you do is you create that file, that file that contains all of this pin information. This one, we will talk about it later in other videos. And now I have my component here and this component has one Axi slave port. And I want to connect this Axi slave port, in fact, to these cache ports here in the microblaze block. So what I do, again, everything is very simple. You just run connection automation. You select MIG7 series S Axi. And then here you choose to which of these Axi masters you want to connect this slave port. This time I use microblaze zero cache and I press OK. Okay, so as you see now, the data cache and instruction cache interfaces of microblade. Let me regenerate the layout. Okay, I zoom here. Yes, the data cache and instruction cache interfaces of the microblade are now connected to one new instantiated Axi interconnect. And the output of this Axi interconnect is going to the slave port of MIG7 uh, series, in fact, our DRAM controller. So this is our DRAM controller. This is its uh, Axi slave port. The Axi slave port is connected to one Axi interconnect. And both of the instruction cache and data cache interfaces of the microblades are connected to this XR interconnect. So both of these guys will be able since then to talk to the DRAM controller through this port. Okay, now if I go to my address editor and I open extract, in fact, this, this part, I will see that microblades will be able to talk to the DRAM memory when it performs transaction in this address range either for instruction or data so when microblaze is initiating read or write transactions to this address range specified here and also specified here which are exactly the same on either instruction cache interface or data cache interface these transactions will be first routed to these ports and then through the axi interconnect which is located here they will be routed to your DRAM controller these numbers will be obviously entries to your linker script later the script that you create and you give to the linker to create the executable for microblades for you. But for now, we don't want to talk about that. Our focus is only connections and connecting XI interfaces. Okay, so as one final part and as one final practice, I want to also connect a big block memory to the caches interfaces of the microblades. So right now, if I look at these cache interfaces, the only Axi slave that I have is this DRAM controller. But as a kind of practice, for these cache interfaces, I want to also have one block memory as an Axi slave. Okay? So 
I want to add an Axi VRAM controller to my system. This is what we already have. MXI DC, MXI IC, they come to the Axi interconnect and then they are connected to the Axi slave port of Axi DRAM controller. This is what I want to add to the system. I want to add one Axi VRAM controller and one block memory. I want them to connect the Axi VRAM controller to block memory and I want also these cache interfaces to be able to communicate with the block memory here. Okay, so I come back to my Vivado environment design and I press Ctrl I and I say VRAM, Axi VRAM controller, I add it to the project. Then again Ctrl I, I type block memory, block memory generator. I add it to the project and then I double click on Axi VRAM controller and I set number of VRAM interfaces just to one is right now two okay so you can connect this guy to two block memories I don't need that I want just to have connection to one block memory so I put it as one I press OK and then you can simply connect this Axi VRAM port to this Axi VRAM port here. So now, sorry, this block memory port to this block memory interface port here. The, it, this connection is not Axi. This connection is, is a very simple VRAM memory interface connection. It, it's very simple, it's not Axi. Okay, now this guy can talk Axi so it can receive Axi transactions and redirect them to the block memory. Okay, this is why we put the Axi VRAM control. Now I want to connect this Axi slave interface somehow to this M Axi interconnect. Okay, and this is the Axi interconnect which is practically connected to cache interfaces of the microblaze. So I double click on this Axi interconnect block and I increase the number of master interfaces to two and I press OK and I wait a little bit and now as you see your Axi interconnect in fact Axi mem interconnect has two Axi master ports and I can connect simply this Axi master port to the Axi VRAM controller that I have here. Okay, so it is it is done. And now you should connect also the clock and reset to suitable sources. So for this just find one clock signal in the rest of the design and perform the connection. I have found this clock signal here, so connect. And then for reset, you should be a little bit more careful. Since in your system, you have two kind of reset signals. One reset signal, which is used for resetting the Axi interconnects themselves. In your system, you have currently two Axi interconnects. One Axi interconnect for peripherals, which is in fact connecting the microblaze to interrupt controller and to UART and to timer. And then you have another Axi interconnect, which is dedicated for connecting microblaze to the DRAM controller and also to this newly added block memory. Okay. And as you see, if you look at the reset signal, of Axi interconnects, you can see that the reset signal of the Axi interconnect is different than the reset signal of the Axi interfaces. This is nothing important, just, just, just obey it, okay? Just is a very simple rule. For peripherals, Xilinx is using a separate reset signal. For interconnects, they are using a separate reset signal. It's not important, just, just make suitable connections when you are connecting your blocks adding your blocks to your Axi architecture. Okay, so I have this Axi reset signal. I make a connection here. 
connection and then since you have added this new axi master port here you also need to do a new set of connections here on the axi interconnect because as i described for you in the previous videos each axi interface has its own reset and clock signal so as you increase the number of axi ports in your axi interconnect the number of reset and clock signals appearing here will extend as well okay so simple clock connection that is it all of the clocks is connected you can save your design and one final step that you should do to make sure that the addition of this block memory to the system is complete is that you should make sure that from the viewpoint of microblaze this block memory is located in a suitable address and microblaze can see it so first let's regenerate layout make your design clean okay and now i go to address editor I extend the microblaze tab and here I see that there is one guy who is connected to microblaze it's not an unconnected slave it is a connected slave but it doesn't have any address what you do you do a very very simple task you just right click and you say auto assign address okay auto assign address and then Vivado environment automatically for you assigns a really suitable address but now if you don't like you can change it okay so in, in my view this address assignment is really nice is just located after this block so we have first the DRAM address range and then after the DRAM address range we have this block memory just maybe the block memory that you want to instantiate in your system you don't want it to be just for kilobytes you want it you you want it to be bigger for example you want it to be for example 64 kilobytes so uh, we update the design based on this new configuration i put it at 64 kilobytes for both of the instruction and data because obviously this block is being seen by both of the instruction cache and data cache and maybe one very important point is that as you are updating the addresses here you should also update the configuration internal to the microblaze for cacheable address range that i don't want to talk about it for now maybe sometime later we will talk about it our purpose is not to go to details of microblaze right now our purpose was just to create a simple axi based architecture maybe this architecture is not that simple but i think it was a very nice initial example of how powerful the tool is and how flexible you are and what really you can do using this tool okay now before we finish everything i i i have some other in fact uh, unconnected signals let let's make them also connected we have a set of reset and we have a set of uh, reset and clock signals so for for this i uh, again the run connection automation really helps us this is the main clock entrance of our system i simply connect it to this diff clock of the board because um, if we look at the rtx board there is one differential clock input and i just connected this to the differential clock input and then we have some set of reset signals and let's make them connected to reset and then i have this reset again i, I make it connected to reset so they are exactly the same it's not important anymore i i wanted just to show you the basic concept so as you see this reset you know is also connected to both of them 
and now this reset signal again I want to connect it to reset similar okay now I have a kind of design which may be somehow suitable to be really implemented and then to be tested on the RTX board I say this was just an example to show how you can create an axi based system okay these series of videos are hobby they are not official in any way i am mohammed sadri and here is kaiserslautern germany i would like to thanks professor luca benini of university of bologna and eth zurich and also professor norbert rain of tu kaiserslautern because of their support, without their support, I would never have the chance to create these videos. You can always find the latest materials related to my zinc training course, either on Green Electrons or on Googlia. Both of them are my own websites. Thank you for watching.